I'm Robert Largent, and this video is to go along with Tank Talk 0523. This is all about dispenser maintenance. And the point of all this is you cannot just ignore your dispensers. You have to recall that you must be careful and safe around these dispensers. This where customers are used to going, driving their vehicles up there, and sometimes they will not look to make sure there are no people in the area before they drive their vehicle up. So always try to make sure you barricade your area so it's very safe. Wear high visibility clothing, and if you have an extra person around, keep another person out there with you to act as a spotter and to redirect traffic. Some terminology of things about dispensers and their associated equipment. When I say dispenser, I mean the point where the customer pumps fuel into their vehicle. Often the customers and other people may refer to these as the pumps, but technically these are dispensers. The equipment on the dispensers is called hanging hardware. That's your hoses, your nozzles, and your hose breakaways. Inside the dispenser are where your fuel filters are. They're like an oil filter in a car. And then you have your electronic equipment on the outside of the dispenser, the card readers, the printers, the push buttons, the displays, and all that kind of thing. The first thing we're going to discuss is how to change your filter on your dispensers. To change your filter, you'll need some equipment, and you, it's a good idea to get this equipment ready before you ever try to start changing out the filter. First, you'll need the keys to the dispenser so that you can open the panels on the sides. And then you'll need a new filter, however many filters you're going to change, have that many filters ready. A filter wrench to remove the old filters with and to tighten the new filters. A bucket to catch any fuel from the filters or from the dispenser. Absorbent rags to clean up any fuel you may spill on the ground. Goggles to protect your eyes. Gloves to protect your hands. Grease to put on the filter when you put it back on so that it stays tight and it doesn't allow for any leaks and a sharpie to write the date on these filters. We're going to take a look inside Spencer number 18. So to get into them, we have to open them right here. And this key fits that lock. You just unscrew it like you're using a screwdriver and you pop it open. Once you get it unscrewed, it kind of falls towards you. So, all you have to do, all I do, use my knee to prop it up, move the hose out of the way, let it fall just a little bit, put the hose back. I don't know if I recorded that at all, but hopefully the words help. So then once you get it, you have to lift up on it just a little bit. Once you have the side panels open and you've made the area safe to work in, you have to turn off the power to the fuel dispenser. You can do this either at the breaker box or you can use the e-stop. Using the e-stop will shut down all dispensers. So if you want to keep some dispensers open while you're working on them, the breaker box may be a better choice, especially if you have a lot of dispensers at your location. You want to lock out the breaker so that nobody accidentally turns it on. You want to close the shear valve. Use a filter wrench to remove the old filter. Allow any excess fuel from the filter or the dispenser to drain into a bucket. Put that old filter in a trash bag so you can dispose of it properly. Apply a thin coat of grease to the gasket on the new filter. Screw it on by hand then tighten it with the wrench. Then open the shear valve back up. Turn the power back on to the fuel dispenser. Test the dispenser to make sure it's working properly, and then put the panels back on, and then dispose of the old fillers properly. Uh, I have accidentally left a shear valve closed on a site that I was working on. The first thing you'll notice is the shear valves. The shear valves should be anchored to the concrete so that they don't move, and customers will run you over while you're sitting because they think you look like a good speed bump. Anyway, if you ever have an incident that you need to shut off fuel, right here is the easiest way to do it. 
you just reach in, you pop that piece up, and the whole thing will shut off. And there's a butterfly valve in there. It shuts off flow of fuel right here, so nothing goes up into the further parts of this. PEI Safety presents Replacement of Filters. Follow these tips to ensure safety while replacing filters. Follow manufacturer's instructions. Turn off power to submerge turbine pumps prior to removing old filters. Close the emergency valve under the dispenser prior to removing an old filter. Relieve the pressure from a pump or dispenser prior to removing an old filter. Have fire extinguishers available for use if needed. Make all station personnel aware that you will have open fuel lines during the filter changing process and brief them on hazards and emergency procedures. Use approved materials to clean up spills. Drain filter contents into an approved container and dispose of old filters properly. Use properly sized and rated filters. Perform a leak test after installing new filters. Make certain all filters are installed properly. Have a new filter ready to install immediately after removing an old filter. Don't attempt to change the filter while the dispenser is running. Don't assume that the power is off. Check it yourself. Don't assume that the emergency valve is closed just because the trip lever is in a closed position. Don't attempt to change a filter while other dispensers of the same product are running. Don't allow fueling to take place in the immediate vicinity of the pump or dispenser you're working on. Don't change filters while the pump or dispenser electrical junction boxes are open. Don't pour fuel from the old filter into the sump under the dispenser. Don't over tighten the new filter. Don't turn the dispenser on while the filter is absent. Thanks for watching. These safety tips have been brought to you by the Petroleum Equipment Institute. For more quick tips and safety resources, visit PEI.org slash safety. You need to be careful when you are working with the dispensers. This is where a lot of gasoline is. Gasoline can get out very easily, so be careful. If you're not comfortable doing it yourself, uh, you should hire a qualified technician to do it for you. Uh, there are some safety tips. Always wear goggles and gloves. You don't want to get gas in your eyes when you're trying to work with it. Make sure the air is well ventilated. Don't smoke. That seems kind of obvious, but we need to make sure everybody's aware of that. Don't over tighten the, the filter. It makes it incredibly hard to get off and you can actually break some of the equipment if you tighten it too much. And then dispose of the old filter properly. It, it is hazardous waste in a lot of areas. So check with your environmental office before you dispose of it. So when you're putting these covers back on, it's just the opposite. You slot it in. Make sure you get those over that little metal piece that sticks out there on both sides. And then it just falls into place. You close it up, put your foot against it, find your screws, screw it back together. I think every manager I've ever spoke to has a story about a customer driving off with a hose. So you can repair hoses yourself. Just be really careful when you're trying to do it. Uh, you need a ladder sometimes and it may not always be the easiest thing. They may be irreparably broken by the customer. So just be careful when you're trying to change these hoses. If you know the customer that drove off with the hose, reach out to your JAG office and let them know what has happened so that they can take action to maybe have that customer recoup us for the replacement of the hose. We have much signage on our dispensers to prevent customers from driving off with the hose in their vehicle. There are signs that say to pay attention when we pump gas. Don't use your cell phone when we pump gas. Make sure the nozzle's in. Don't leave a nozzle unattended. Don't go inside the shop while you're pumping gas. But customers will still find ways not to follow these rules. So we need to have a plan of action for cleaning up any spills caused by these and for repairing the nozzle or hose that they've ripped off the dispenser. Thank you for your time and attention. If you ever need any assistance, please let me know. Here's contact information for anyone on the fields team. If you need assistance from anyone, please reach out to them. 
for the topic that you need assistance with.